All right, so I don't know what session number this is. I think it's session 74, 74A of B or maybe. Uh, so in the last time you guys left off, uh, we were you guys were in the astral plane. You were um, trying to find the rest of the group that you teleported away from. Um, long story short, you saw a couple of uh, ships. Uh, looked like squids. I don't think you ever, no one ever figured out if they were mind flayers or not. But basically, you avoided them. You went over the mountain range that uh, Brevin had led you guys through before. And Tomon was kind of leading the charge because he's the one that had rolled the real good in survival as far as retracing uh, Brevin's steps. And he just crossed over the uh, the summit of this mountain range so that the um, the, the squid-looking things that you guys saw are no longer in sight. And from this point forward, Tolman would have, with his survival rolls from last time, would have guesstimated you're probably about three hours away from the eventual portal that leads into Limbo, to basically where Silith teleported you guys out. Okay? Does that sound good? Yep. Yep, sounds good. And I'm pretty sure that Toman left Rufus behind this time. Rufus is not with him. So Correct. It's, just, it's just, just Toman. Toman, Usul, and Silith from this point forward. Uh, Rand, do me a favor if you would. Go into your uh, settings for your um, I guess your avatar and go ahead and change that to Toman so I don't get screwed up and start saying Rand this or Professor P that. Oh, okay, hold on one second. Okay, so while he's doing that, just, uh, again, I plan on going probably about an hour with this session tonight, maybe hour and a half tops. Uh, I guess it's really up to you, because I'm a West Coast now, so I can basically run this for three hours if we need to, but it's really up to you guys. Um, with that being said, there's going to be certain parts of it that, for lack of a better term, I am going to be kind of railroading, because I, I kind of know where I want you guys to go. I'll give you guys an opportunity to kind of react and, and, and I guess, explore as, as best you can, but... I'm trying to wrap up this little side quest thing so I can get you guys all back together, if that makes sense. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Really, really perfect. Like, uh, we, we know, we discussed before we went back in the portal, we said we're going to try and get to where they were and uh, try and uh, meet up with them. Right. And I think, you, so out of character, we know that uh, they left that doll behind mm -hmm. at the portal. Yep. So we we will know, well, I figure we're just traveling here. If we don't run into anything, then make it there, right. and that's where the actual, any role-playing would start from. Right. Okay. All right, so let me switch to this generic screen for now, since we're kind of theater of the mind right now. Okay. Um, you guys can see that, right? Yep. Okay, so yep. if we get to a point where I need to drop your tokens in, I'll do that, but let's just go with that for now for a screen. All right, so you guys have just crossed over the, uh, the summit of that mountain range. And again, Tolman, you know that you're still probably about three hours away. There are little pockets of boulders slash small islands, ruins, whatever, between here and there that you can still try to you know, jump from spot to spot to keep on hiding. But what is your guys' intention now? So uh, we were out of sight of the, uh, the squid ships. Like, we haven't seen them in a while uh, yeah. since they started chasing the, the weasel and whatever. Right. Basically, once you crossed over the summit and started going back down the other side of the mountain, you lost sight of them because they were on the other side of the, the mountain range when you guys went over the summit, if that makes sense. Right. So you don't so know we if were, they're still there, but you can't see them. Um, were we were we booking it or were we, we were still sneaking? You guys were being sneaky, as I recall. All right. So, yeah, we're sticking low and we were, we were following Toman because he was leading us. Okay. You guys continue to be stealthy as you make your way towards the uh, uh, the limbo gate. Uh, yep, sounds sounds right. All right, so here's what I want to do: either Tolman, since he's leading the group, he gives me three stealth checks with advantage, or I'll let all of you guys roll one stealth check each. I'll take Tolman's. That's what I thought. You were. <laughs> Flapping bed sheets don't make for good stuff. Gotcha. All right, there's one. Uh, three. Two, three. Okay. All right, so you have one for every hour, basically. All right, so Toma managed to kind of you know, lead you guys from spot to spot. What was the key? Uh, give me uh, three more perceptions as well. Uh, who? To one person. I guess it's going to be Toma. Oh, yeah. Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. I just clicked too quick. <laughs> two more, Toma. Okay, 
Wow, and your last one was the highest one. All right, so you guys uh, kind of keep following Tolman from spot to spot. Uh, don't really see anything else. You get within probably about, I don't know, I'd say 100, 150 feet of the location. You guys can see the, the portal. Uh, but Tolman, you're the first one to, to notice this, pretty much further back maybe, that you do see there's four other figures that are near the, uh, the portal gate. Uh, they're humanoid in shape. It's like one is much larger than the other. Uh, again, you're, you're pretty far back that you can't quite make out who they are or what they are other than they're humanoids. I, I signal to the party that there's people ahead. And from this distance, you're not going to be able to be able to make out, even with that perception roll you rolled there, of exactly you know what they are or who they are without getting closer. Do I have any idea that they might be uh, the people in our party? Or do they definitely look different than that? Well, one of them looks a lot larger. The other three look more of a normal, standard human size. So take that. You said you, you said we're about 150 feet away? Well, roughly. You're basically to a, a distance where you can't really make out what kind of humanoids they are. But you can definitely see them. Okay, what's my... I have some... I'd like to whisper to the group that, uh, hey, let me send out another um, decoy. See what everybody says. Uh, um, so, so, so like, well, we still need to get into the gate. And uh, he's going to ask uh, Stool, because Resident Druid, um, if he knows how to activate the gate or how to get us into there. I do not. So, I can't remember if I that's had, not, I, can't remember if I, I think anybody. Brevin was, go ahead. I was going to say, Brevin was the one that activated the gate in the other, the other party. Yeah, Brevin was the one that opened up the gate last time. Yeah. So we, uh, we're coming here, but we don't know how to get the gate open. <laughs> <laughs> it's going it's to be great. <laughs> um, all right, so, so it's going to suggest that we, uh, we try and, find out who's over there first before we start any trouble. What was the What was the I, I My intent was to uh, send out a, a decoy, another animal, and uh, just to determine what their intent was. If they, if they go ahead and attack it, we know that uh, uh, they're hostile, and uh, you know we also might be able to get some more information by seeing how they fight. Um, you know, we might be able to determine if we know who they are. Okay, what's the rest of the group say to that? Uh, Not Rufus. <laughs> Rufus is gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not Sylvs. Sylvs uh, thinks we should uh, we should have someone sneak closer first and try and before we like alert him that someone is here. Have someone sneak closer and. Uh, Try and like see if they can learn anything more. Sounds like you volunteered. Phil <laughs> <laughs> uh, thinks he's volunteering. Toman, our resident leader, who actually knows where he's going, but so uh, is going to give him a blessing to uh, increase his stealth. <laughs> You're not even waiting for Toman to say yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty much just going to like bless Toman. Like, here you go. Here's uh, Toman. Will, Toman will sneak up there. Hey guys, Bless watch Rufus. Keep Rufus with you. Rufus isn't here. <laughs> oh, he's not. That's right. He's right, back right. in the. Yeah. He's there in spirit. Because <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> no. All right. So you're accepting this for Toman? Yeah, I'll accept this for Toman. <laughs> okay. How close do you want to get? Uh, close enough to to get, uh, get a better perception on him. Now, I don't know if if. Uh, you know this, but I'm looking at his character, so he's got that rogue ability like the Eye of Insight with bonus action perception checks. So, I mean, his character's kind of tailor-made to, to figure out what's going on and assess the situation and, and do an investigation as a bonus action as well, that kind of Okay, okay. All right. So, so let's casting this Blessing of the Trick on you, which, if I'm reading it right, gives you advantage on your stealth checks. It lasts for one yep. hour. Okay. Uh, yeah, good. I was going to ask you that next. 
can use a bonus action to make a perception check to spot a hidden creature object. And that's every single round for him. He, he has that ability. I haven't really seen him use it, but we'll, we'll make use of it in this. So he's definitely going to be more perceptive. Uh, I think this is the Inquisitor Rogue uh, feature. Um, he's definitely going to going to be using this as he sneaks forward stealthily. This his bonus action each round as he moves forward is going to be to make perception checks uh, to try to figure out uh, who they are or whether they're hostile or not. Okay. Right. Well, first things first. I want you to first give me your uh, your stealth check. You're trying to get a little bit closer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And now give me a perception check with advantage as well because of that eye for detail thing. Holy crap. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to say with that high a roll, you get within maybe 100 feet of them. Just, you only go like maybe another 50, 60 feet. And you can get a better view of them. Actually, here, let me just switch the map. I did a little bit of theater of the mind with this, so don't let a game too much. But uh, <laughs> you guys saw it that was here for the last session because I prematurely showed everybody <laughs> what was there. Stop being premature there. So if I zoom out here a little bit. All right, so basically, this is what you see. Sorry, I didn't mean to ping there. Just trying to fix my screen here a little bit. Ninjas? So what you can see from this vantage point, again, you're probably about 100 feet away at this point, is you can see that there are two figures that are, uh, again, you can't see their face. It's almost like they're covered up in some kind of a scarf or reverse hood, and they get some really big hats. And another individual is wearing like a, uh, almost like a leather helmet that completely covers his face as well. And with that higher perception roll, you see there's also a, this big guy in the back is in fact a slutty. I'm not sure if you've seen a green one yet, but there's no mistaking that his features look just like a slotty. However, you also notice that uh, the slotty is sitting there in chains. He's got chains around his neck. He's got both of his hands. Uh, chained together as well and the chains are actually there's two I guess parts of the chain going out uh, this individual with the big hat and this individual with the big hat both have the other end of the chain and well guys this looks promising this guy's uh, kind of pacing back and forth uh, across this little island here maybe if uh, if if they're you know Enemies of my enemies are my friends, so they say. You're coming back to tell us this, right? Because we're uh, we're still like way back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he finds out kind of what's going on, he's going, he's sneaking back to them. Give me one more stealth, then, if you're going back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, we have a development up ahead. It looks like uh, there's there's three guys, and they appear to have a slotty in chains. Um, not sure exactly what to make of it, but maybe they could be allies, even if and hopefully they're not against us. If they're against the slotty too, and we could play that card. Are you willing to bet your life on it? Well, I don't see Brevin, so even if we get there. If, I mean, there's a chance that these guys know how to get through the portal, but I'm scared. What if we go through and we can't get back? So let's just pipe up. I can get us back. Don't just uh, try not to set the bar on fire this time. We can also, at, we can also potentially sit here and wait to see if they go through the portal and try to go in after them undetected. Um, so it's going to... So it's kind of like, that's not a bad idea, but what happens when we go through the portal? I don't know. We did get, Brevin did talk to us about that, though. Um, we, like, we know what happens when we go through the portal, we just don't know what happens, what I, I mean, like, what happens when we get to the other side where they're going to be, is what I mean. I mean, out of character, we, we know what happens, but our, these characters here, I think, have no idea what happens when they go through the portal. No, 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 we were, we were I thought we did, like, Jodell and uh, Brevin had discussed with us, like, what happens when you enter limbo? But we did. We haven't actually gone through yet. I think, as I recall, Brevin shared with you guys that how you got to be able to control the chaos within limbo once you're there. But mm. you weren't there specifically for the conversation that Brevin shared with everybody about what to do as soon as they go through the portal. 
because yeah. you guys you guys bamped out of there before <laughs> that conversation happened. Okay. But yeah, my um my question though was more in regards to like what happens we pop through the portal and even though we don't know what it's exactly gonna happen when we come through, what happens we pop through and like literally we're standing there right next to those guys like surprise. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I mean when I'm asking. Uh, but you're asking your other party members, not the DM. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No. No. I'm asking. I'm asking. <laughs> like Toman's idea is like we'll just follow them through the portal and then it's like yeah you walk through the portal and like it's like walking into a tunnel and they stop so you walk right into the guy. Hey, Brian, take Rufus off. He's scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> Is he looking at you funny? <laughs> he doesn't want to get murdered. <laughs> what do you guys think? We can either approach him and figure out what's going on. If maybe they can open the gate. Or we can uh, wait and see if they go through the gate and we can chase after him. So it's going to be like, well, it maybe wouldn't hurt to uh, talk to them. I mean, I prefer what? not to just hang around here. Last time we did that, a dragon came. So it's going to, so it's going to say, if we uh, if we started talking to them, well, at least they're trying to hold on that slotty, so they wouldn't be able to chase us if we uh, if we needed to make an escape. Hopefully. Hopefully, be an optimist. So, cell votes, we, uh, we tried to make contact. I vote you do that. We'll stay here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, cell so gets pushed to the front. <laughs> All right. Toman? Objections? No objections? Um, I'm kind of trying to let you guys run this a little bit. Um, no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm a. I'm, uh, I'm I'm game for whichever. It sounds like we have a split party. <laughs> that never happened. That never happened. I'd actually <laughs> suggest that you uh, move off to the side before making your presence known. So Coming from give the up our Coming from the side. I so yeah. So I was gonna um, sneak up to about. You said we were 150 feet, 140 feet. Uh, I think you were 150 feet when you first saw them, and told them went forward 50 and then came back. So, so it's gonna try and sneak up to about a hundred. <laughs> okay, give me a stealth. Check. And that go. Okay. All right, I had to GM looked on. Okay, and then he's gonna um, measure. 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 Oh, okay, theater of the mind because this actually isn't cheap, but. So you're so about, it's, uh, about 100 okay. feet away right now. Okay. So it's going to come up, and he's going to make himself visible, and he's going to slowly approach while hailing them. Hailing them how? Uh, in common. Uh, what are you, uh, common and draconic. Like, so, uh, not, like, in a non-threatening manner, like, with wave, uh, like waving, an uh, waving an arm and saying, Ho there! Okay. Uh, so before uh, anything else, Tolman, what were you doing during this? Were you staying back or were you going up there with Scylla? Did we lose Rand? I'm sorry, the kid got up out of bed. I, I just missed what you just said. No, so Scylla moved forward about 50 feet and he's going to basically step out in the open and start healing, saying, ho there, or whatever. What was Tolman doing? Was Tolman going up there with Scylla or was Tolman staying back with his heel? Tolman's staying back with those two. He's going to try to stay out of sight, and, and but still able to see what's going on so that he can be ready to come to Silt's aid should things go south. All right, so just so we're clear, we're just through the mind a little bit. So Sue and Tolman are roughly about 150 feet away. Silt is about 100 feet away. Yes. Okay, so this map's not 100% accurate from that, from that standpoint, but just to set it up that way. Yeah. All right, so Sue's so going to get his uh, uh, bow out just in case. Okay, what's that so Sewell's readying his weapon. Sewell's readying his weapon. Okay, well, what's your what's the trigger for you to do something with that? Uh, I don't have one. I, I'm hoping that this goes all just perfectly. I just want to make sure that I have something in case it's needed. Okay, so so we're clear. It's not a ready action. So if something happens, you're not don't get an automatic attack. It'll still be initiative if something happens. 
unless you specify right. something will trigger you to, to fire or shoot. Nope, you're correct. Okay. No ready action. Okay. All right, so still have to remind me again, what, it, what are you saying? How are you hailing them? So uh, he's, he's waving, and he's speaking out to them. He's saying uh, in, in common, because he's, he's got common draconic, uh, Ho there. Uh, can you help some a lost traveler? Okay. Um, give me a persuasion. Uh, nice. Okay, because uh, uh, not an advantage. Nope, at normal. What the hell? Okay, that's still pretty damn good for rolling a one. <laughs> All right. So as you start talking, the 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 one in front. The one that's got like the leather helmet across his whole face. He he looks straight towards you and kind of steps out in front of these other two. Um, he has his he pulls his bow off his back. He doesn't point at you, but he's just got it kind of resting on his on his thigh. But he doesn't say anything to you. Just kind of standing there with the bow at his at his leg. Okay. So it's gonna float a little closer, still with the, the arms up, you know, non-threatening, and. Um, so let's say he floats, uh, he was at 100 feet, so let's say he floats to about another 15 feet closer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to keep talking. He's going to be like, uh, I see you've captured a slotty. Vile be so Um I, I don't perchance have to know if you, uh, I don't perchance think you know how you could open that portal there. He's like making chatter as he slowly gets closer, but obviously like being non friendly with the hands up thing. Give me one more persuasion. Uh. Okay, and at that, you see him kind of release the tension on his bow a little bit. He says, uh, we don't know who you are or why you're here. And he's saying this in kind of broken common. You can tell common is not his native tongue as he's speaking to it, but he does know common. I don't know who you are or why you're here, but you shouldn't be here. And you kind of turns to so, one of these guys behind him and, and says something that you don't recognize in a different language. So it's not draconic either. No. Okay, so I've recognized that. So I'm going to float up to 50 feet, and I'm just going to say, well, I don't think I, I don't really think I should be here either. But you see, uh, I need to get through that portal there to, you know, um, hopefully save the world and kill all the slotties. And uh, do you guys know anything about centaurs? He just kind of keeps looking at you and Goes back. He turns back to this one back here and whispers something else. Not whisper, says something to him in a different language. He turns back to you. Says, "Are you alone?" Uh, so it's gonna be like, uh, "No, nope, I've got a couple friends here, but uh, like I said, we're just trying to get through that portal there. I don't suppose you could give us a hand." Okay. As you mentioned, the other two, he, he puts a little more tension on his bow again. He says, "Tell them to step out too." Uh, so it's gonna kind of turn around and wave at the other guys because he's uh. He's now what he'd be. Yeah, you're out wet. Out in the at light. 85. Yeah, he's he's 65 feet away from them. He's 85 feet. Guys, well, I know I said he moved a little closer. So, yeah. Uh, let, let's say he's about 70, 75 feet from each group. So he's gonna turn on a wave to Tom and Azul, and then he's gonna uh, turn uh, turn back to the guy there, and he's gonna say, "So, could you could you give us a hand?" <laughs> And he wants to persuade that guy, and because he's been talking for one minute, he gets a double persuasion bonus. Okay, but before you move, I want to hear what Tolman and Usul do from your waving at them. Uh, before I step out, I'll, I'll go ahead and put my bow away and and, uh, and then come out from the uh, being hidden. Okay. What about Tolman? Tom will do the same. He's going to assume that, that Sills was able to have some non-threatening conversation and feels it's safe. So he's going to just uh, step out peacefully with Osul, um, non-threatening. Okay. And so you'll see that uh, as they step out, the warrior kind of turns his attention to the other two over there. And he kind of just studies them for a second or two, but releases the tension on his bow. You're going to roll your one more perception. Uh, persuasion, because you're so damn good at it. <laughs> uh, actually, I just realized something too. It should have been plus seven to each of those rolls, anyways. It doesn't do double. I can't. I don't know how to add double. Uh, 
I, I took the, the diplomat feat, which means my persuasion bonus was supposed to be 14, not 7. Okay, that's so it. each of those should have been, that should have been 19 and 23. So out of character, if you go to your character sheet on the little sprocket thing, there'd be a thing in there where you can change your skill to be have like expertise instead of proficient, and that doubles your proficiency bonus. That's what Wait, you're talking about. Okay, it says, I see proficiency bonus by level default. should be right in the middle. Okay, so like all the skills, and there's like a little word on the left that will either say proficient or something else, and you can click on that and change the expertise where it doubles your proficiency. Okay, I, I have that done, but it still only gives... Uh, it doesn't seem right. Something's not right. Well, we'll I do have that clicked. I'll take a look at it. You rolled good. <laughs> yeah. I'll take a look no, at it no. after this session. Just, I'm just looking at my, my, my features and trades. It says double persuasion bonus plus 14. Okay. And I was like, my my uh, my persuasion on the on my character card says 11. Okay. Yeah, but that's gonna be, it's going to be double proficiency, I'm almost certain. Right now, it should be. Regardless, is that is that your last roll? You still got to roll one more for your. Uh, that was yeah. I'll roll into one more. That was me asking if he would help us okay. or if they would help us. That's my last one. Yep. Oh shit. <laughs> and it should be seven more, so thirty. And at that, you see him kind of take the full slack out of his bow and he puts it back on his back. Says, "Step forward. It's okay." He's just gonna float forward with hopefully the others following behind him. He's gonna kind of glance behind him, see if the others are you know coming with him. He's going to float slowly to give them like time to catch up to him. <laughs> While you're going that way, the warrior will kind of step back here in between the two monks and kind of be talking back and forth between the two and turn back towards you guys as you approach. You stop like uh, 10 feet away. He's like, uh, so what brings you here? You want to go through this portal, you said? Uh, so it's going to say, yeah, we're looking for our, our friends. We got separated and they, uh, they should have entered limbo. Uh, we were, uh, looking to hunt down some of those. He's going to nod towards the spotty evil, vile things. Yeah, I bet you would. And we happened to, uh, catch this one coming through that portal that you were talking about wanting to go through there so bad. He's, uh, so it's going to like, show surprise me like just now. No, it's, it's been... Uh, at least you know, half an hour, 45 minutes ago. We've been hanging out here to see if any more will stick their heads through there. We were on a scouting trip in this area, and my commander sent me to this area because we saw some activity from far off. Uh, it's probably been a couple hours now since so we noticed that, but we were uh, scouting out some mind flare activity in the area, and we're hoping that we'd catch one of them, and we caught this one. So it wasn't a bad day. So it's going to nod and be like, uh, that portal should lead to their home plane. Um, we've uh, we got separated from our friends, and they should have gone through the portal recently. Uh, maybe he knows something about it. And so it's going to move uh, right over there. Uh, uh, did you, oh, and I did, yeah. Um so it's just gonna do to do, 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 do. um do, do. so it's gonna offer to uh to definitely help discuss or interrogate it and uh assist them if more come out because he obviously has made his disdain pretty clear that we don't we don't like the slotty. Mm -hmm. So two um, things. So one, the slotty's sitting there kinda on his on his rump. Because again, hands are in chains. And uh, just kind of looks at you, expressionless, doesn't really say anything, doesn't really move. It's like he's just content sitting there in chains. The other thing is uh, the guy in front, as you mentioned that you know, the Slotties are from that plane, he pulls off his helmet, and you look at his, his no hair, completely, completely bald head, uh, greenish skin, little brown spots all over it, and kind of like a flat, almost like his nose has been missing. And he tells you that says that's our home as well. These these sons of bitches think they own that uh, the the chaos plane, but it's ours. I tell you. Um, so it's gonna blink his little lizard eyes a couple times because this is not the weirdest person he's seen. He does look in the mirror every morning, and uh, this is like and uh, and who might you folks be? And he's uh, he's gonna he's gonna say it's uh, it's high time some instructions were overdue. I think. 
instructions. I introductions. Oh, introductions. Oh. All right. I should have had this ready, but I don't. So they give you three really weird names. It's, <laughs> it's not like anything that you guys have ever heard or that dialect of how they say their words. It's almost like there's too many consonants. And there's like maybe a pause in between some of them. So you're not sure if it's like one name or if it's like two or three names when they rattle them off. Cool. And he'll share that uh, they're from the, uh, the Gidzerai city of Shrakit Lore. Now, now, we, out of character, we don't know what that one is yet, right? We know Yeshomar, we don't know. I don't know. Uh, if, I can't remember if Brevin ever told you guys the name of the city he was going to take you guys to. You guys recall that at all? I don't. All right, so let's do it this way. The name sounded a little bit familiar, but I, I can't say for sure. Okay, so one of you, you guys choose. We're only just a straight up uh, D100. <laughs> so let's do it. Uh, what? Roll one D100. Okay, yeah. So, so if you, you recall Brevin saying something about that uh, that town within within the plane of uh, chaos. Okay, so mm, from that point, he's, he's gonna Silth is gonna uh, introduce himself and then uh, point to Toman and Asul for their introductions. And he's just going to say, oh, thanks, friends. He's not going to be able to say their names. <laughs> He'll turn to uh, both Masul and Toman. So speak, friends. What is your name? I am Toman. I, a ranger uh, dedicated to fighting these beasts. Hmm. Quite a small fellow. Quite a small Uh, sometimes uh, big things come in small packages. Hmm. Well, I guess that remains to be seen. So it's going to lean over and be like, they don't like being called small. <laughs> Get no expression, nothing from him. And he turns okay. to Usul, same thing. And how about you? I am Usul, a, a druid who is also on a quest to rid the world of these things, or rid the worlds of the, these things. Mm. I think uh, we have uh, similar goals in our lives. Nice to meet so you. it's gonna go ahead. Oh, sorry. And then as from there, so we'll uh, start explaining how the the Slotty have been entering our plane as well. And he kind of turns over. Really? How do you know this? Uh, so it's gonna. Would I? Well, did I still have a like a scratch mark or a scar on my shoulder from where it uh, hit me with the egg thing? Uh, no, because you've, you've been healed, and that thing's no longer in you, so... All right, so it's completely gone. gone. Yep. All right. Um, we're just, so we'll just explain that we've fought several of their kind uh, throughout our journey. Okay. He's like, well, well we've fought a few ourselves. And he kind of goes and turns back and, and says something else to this monk back here in a language you don't understand. Monk kind of nods, doesn't say anything. Sorry, I say monk. You don't know he's a monk. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought they were ninjas when I saw the pick. So he'll turn to you, Silla, since you're kind of being the, the voice of the party. So, so uh, you want to go through the portal? Uh, preferably, yes. We'd like to see if uh, our friends are still around. He's like, well, it's a little early now. Our our uh, our ship's not going to be back for a couple more hours, but I can show you how to open the portal if you want. Uh, and so that'd be greatly appreciated. And um, can, can we come back through it if we if we uh, don't find our friends? Well, if you can repeat the pattern on the other side. You can't just keep it open for us? No, that's not how this works. They only stay open for six, seven seconds tops before they shut again. Otherwise, these little things, and he turns around and kicks a slotty. So that's why these things will be coming through anytime they want. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, so I was going to ask the party members, uh, do you guys, uh, shall we take a trip through the portal and see if we can't find our friend? At the, at the least, we can at least uh, 
finish our original mission. I'm, I'm in. Sir, good sir, you don't you don't have need for our, our uh, for us to be here in case more slotty come out. This is that's it's your call, but if we're slotting the other side, we'll take care of them too. Do you uh, do you wish to come through the portal with us? No, we'll show you through, but we're going to wait here for our because our ship's not going to be there yet. Nathaniel, he'll, 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 he'll say something to the guy back behind him again, and both of them in tandem will start kind of dragging. You. Okay, uh, I was like, oh god, I have no sound. You hear me? You guys hear me? Do you lose Brian? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, Brian's got no sound. Really? My sound's gone out? <laughs> One second, guys. I'm still here. I don't know what happened to Brian. You guys can't hear me. Can you guys see this? Hello? This is weird. All right, so let's try to disconnect and connect again. How about now, guys? Oh, Discord went down too. Awesome. Internet is fun. Okay, so can I pause this recording? See a pause button. Unless it needs to stop. That sucks. Alright, well, I'm going to stop it. I'll pick it back up if and when this works.